Welcome back everybody to our look at the book of Ephesians. We're going to continue where we left off um, from chapter 1. Last time we looked at verses 7 through 10. Now we're going to look at verses 11 through 14. So let's go ahead and read it. Ephesians chapter 1 starting in verse 11. In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. Verse 13 says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Now there's a couple of repetitive themes that I'm starting to see here in Ephesians chapter 1 that I kind of just want to point out to you, okay? So in verse 11, he's talking about obtaining an inheritance. Us as believers, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus according to the purpose of his will. We have obtained an inheritance. Now, what is this inheritance? This inheritance is eternal life. It is reconciliation to God through Jesus Christ, so that we might be with Him in after we pass from this life into the next. It is the inheritance that we will be reconciled to God, not only spiritually, but in the new life that is to come in heaven. Okay. Now, looking at verse eleven. It says in the, 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 the rest of the verse, Having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. The starting to repeat, Paul's almost starting to repeat himself just to get this point across. Um, like in verse 5, he says, He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace. So, Things I'm starting to see here is God predestined us because he works all things according to his will to the praise of his glorious grace. There's a there's a, a transition of all three of these things that can are starting to show up in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, okay? Verse verse twelve says, So that you who were the first hope first to hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory. Now, this is important, this next verse, verse 13, it says, In him you also, when you heard, heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So, verse 11, and, and also previous verses, Paul talks about how we have been predestined for adoption as sons to God. He says we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined. Okay? And then he says when we believed the word of truth, which was the gospel of our salvation, we were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. One thing that I want to bring up to you all, and I, and I believe that people get this backwards. I believe that in the community who that rejects predestination in the sense that I believe predestination to be. I believe this is one of the the fighting verses that they give. Uh, they say, you know, God predestines someone after they believe, okay? I do not think that's biblical. I think we need to look at these verses chronological in the way that things happen. Verse 11 says, we have obtained an inheritance. We have been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. This is this is a past event. Predestination happened in the past. In the Greek, in the, the definition of predestination is to predetermine beforehand. Um, and, then, and then we see that believers are sealed, okay? I believe that we are predestined, okay? We are predestined to be reconciled to God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, okay? And then, those who are predestined, or an another term we used, is those who have been elected for salvation, so to speak, when they believe, they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit comes into them and lives in them and creates in them a new life. That's the seal 
of their salvation, the seal of the inheritance. That is the evidence in which someone is born again, that when they confess their sins, they repent from their sins and believe on Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit gains a, a new residence inside of them and it changes them. That is the seal of the inheritance. That is the proof of the pudding so to speak. That is the fruit of our salvation, that the Holy Spirit would come into us, renew us and change us, and then produce in us works that are only able to be produced by the Spirit. There are a bunch of Christians, so to speak, today who profess Jesus. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. No, don't go to church. No, don't read the Bible. But, no, but I believe in Jesus. I prayed the prayer. There's no works. There's no evidence of salvation. And while we, myself and my church, we're not legalists, we don't preach works, but the Bible is clear that if a Christian does not have fruits of the Spirit, they do not have works of the Spirit, things that are evident, evidenced by the Holy Spirit living in them, then they have to question their salvations. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. We cast out demons in your name. We did great works in your name. And Jesus said to them, Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You act as if I never give you a law to follow. Depart from me. And, and, and he casts them away from him. So there's going to be many people. Paul says in Corinthians, I think it's 2 Corinthians. It's either 1 or 2 Corinthians. I'll have to go back and look at it. Um, that we need to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. You need, to, you need to look down deep inside of you. Do you have works? Do you have fruits that are only able to be produced by the Spirit? If so, that is a great reason to believe that you are born again. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. Okay, now I get off the box about works and fruits and the Holy Spirit. It's important. I'll make a whole other video on it, but I don't want to spend this entire time looking at just that because there's so much gold in this passage, okay? Okay, let's look. In verse 5, God has a purpose and a will, okay? In verse 9, he made known to us the mystery of of his will according to his purpose which he set forth on Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him in verse 11 it says we've been we've been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will just looking over Ephesians it's evident that God has a plan the sovereign God of the universe has a plan which he has set forth before the foundation of the world was created we looked at that a couple of videos ago that we were predestined before the foundation of the world was ever laid down so is predestination biblical we've looked at verses 1 through 14 we're going to continue to look on but just in Ephesians chapter 1, there's no jumping the fence. There's no explaining it away. You can't say that God doesn't predestine those whom he intends to save. You can't. You would be doing a disservice to the scriptures. You would be saying things that the scriptures do not say. Heresy is a very, very, very bad thing. I emphasize that because it's bad. Do I believe that you have to believe in predestination to be born again? I do not believe predestination is a salvation issue. So brothers and sisters, do not tr do not stumble over this. Do not cause other brothers and sisters to stumble over this. This is something in which God will reveal to them. The sovereignty of God will reveal this truth to them. Okay, just through reading of the scriptures in time. It's not a salvation issue, brothers. So just, just remember that, okay? We have obtained an inheritance. We've also revealed the we have received the promised Holy Spirit. I don't I don't know in what direction God wants to take this, because we can go in many different directions, branching from predestination. Um, onto other subjects, but just just these verses, 
just just meditate on these. We've we have obtained an inheritance, brothers. We've been born again. I talked about this in the previous video. We are redeemed. Okay, there's a fire, a new fire in us called the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, you will be like a fire that can't stay under a basket that has to light the whole house, so to speak. Um, Jesus says that we are a city on a hill. We are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And so we need to let this light shine. We need to rely and trust on the Holy Spirit to work in us. We need to ask Him to work in us. We need to be obedient to Him. We need to stay in the Scriptures and we need to share the Gospel to lost people. This is important. And I'm, I'm wrestling with the, with the way we need to go with these videos specifically Ephesians um, because like I said it's so much it's so full of gold I just don't know where to go the Holy Spirit um, is dealing with me um, just which way to go okay so let's wrap this up just verses 1 through 14 um, in summary Jesus has predestined us as sons he has predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Jesus died for us okay why? To the praise of His glorious grace, according to His purpose. Okay? He has a purpose. He has a counsel. And He has a will. We have been redeemed through His blood. We are forgiven of our trespasses because He lavished upon us His grace and mercy. He made known to us the mystery of His will, that His plan in Christ was to unite all things to Himself. Saints, brothers, sisters, we have obtained an inheritance. We, we have received the seal of the Holy Spirit. He is the guarantee of our inheritance. Brothers and sisters, and if you're, if you're not born again watching this video, this, this may not make sense to you. And I encourage you to watch some of my other videos. But just, just know that God... Has a plan. He created his plan before the earth was created, before the universe was brought forth into existence by the word of his power. God, in his sovereign will, decided each individual whom he would save. He didn't look down the corridors of time to see who would believe in him, and then he predestined him. Because if you combine all that thought together, that is predestination. God knew who would believe in him. Why? Because God predestined that that person would believe in him. And those who believe in Jesus are forgiven of their sins. They acquire an inheritance. And then they obtain the, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the seal and the guarantee of their inheritance. Jesus' death on the cross is effectual to every single person that it was intended for. If you say Jesus died for every single person in mankind, yet people still perish, then that means his death was ineffective, thus dishonoring the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if we stay biblical and we look at the scriptures correctly and we, we interpret them correctly using other scriptures... Then we come to the conclusion that God has a purpose of election, as Romans 9 says. Because before Jacob or Esau ever did anything good or bad, he predestined that one would be great and that one would not. He predestined that his plan would take place through one and that the other would perish. Okay, now let me tell you something today. Jesus' death on the cross is effective. It is intended for those whom God has predestined for adoption. Predestination is biblical, my brothers and sisters. And and I believe we're going to continue in Ephesians in a different in a different path. Let's go ahead and look at Romans chapter 9. And I know this video is going a little bit longer, but this is good. Romans chapter 9. And this isn't this isn't just a little go-to just to prove my point. This is biblical. This is the word of God. So Paul says in Romans chapter 9, at the beginning he's talking about, he's giving a little bit of uh, the history of Israel. But we'll look at verse 6, okay? Romans chapter 9 verse 6 says, 
But it isn't though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. That, that's an important, vor, important uh, verse. For all, for not all who are descended, who come from Israel, belong to Israel. Dang, that sun's bright. And not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. Does that, do you see this? Not all children of Abraham are his children just because they're his offspring. Hmm. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as, as offspring. This is important. Just because you are born onto this planet does not mean you are a child of God. It says that those who are a child of God are a child of God because they were a child of a promise, a particular promise that God gave in the Old Testament. It says, for this is what the promise said. About the next year I will return and Sarah will have a son. And not also, not only also, but when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. And there's a lot more to that chapter. So as we see in Ephesians chapter 1 and Romans chapter 9, election doesn't depend on human will. Just because you are born doesn't mean you're a child of God. In fact, this whole notion that every child is a child of God is a lie. Just because you, you can't, there's no way to go around this. It's plain in the scripture. Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. The just, sovereign God of the universe has the right to do whatever he wants with us sinful, wretched people. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I encourage you to, to take up hope. Be encouraged by the fact that God has chose you to be redeemed and reconciled to himself. And that it's nothing that you could have ever done. And it's to the praise of his glorious grace that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And if you would only just repent and believe in him, repent and turn to Christ, you will be saved. This is important. Election is in the Bible. There's no way to get around it. I'm, and I know at this point I'm repeating myself, but the scriptures are full of treasure. We just have to look at it and find it. I hope that you have got something from these, these messages. I know I seem a little bit rough. Um, just the Holy Spirit lights me up about some of these issues because they are such big topics. And they are such, they're so full of truth that I want people to, to, I want people to meditate and love each other in these truths, okay? And so in future videos, we're going to look at a couple other topics. I've got some ideas um, that I'm going to meditate on. but and we're, and we're going to continue our look into Ephesians. But just look over Ephesians. Read the whole book of Ephesians. Read the whole book of Romans. Read the whole Gospel of John. It's in many places. And we're going to look at them um, in the time to come. But thank you for stopping by. Have a good day.